Hey, hey guys, it's Ryan with My Listing Club. In this video, we'll be continuing on with the educational series, How to Build an Online Business with the My Listing WordPress Theme. As we've done throughout this series, we'll be using the My Listing Project template as our guide. And you can get your hands on this template by going to the My Listing Club website. That's mylisting.club and scrolling down the homepage just a bit. Once you click on the My Listing Project template card, you'll be taken to the product page where I outline what this thing is all about. Uh, there's a walkthrough video, but you're going to get a first-hand look at this template throughout this entire series. And there's also a change log at the bottom to let you know uh, what is coming and going from this template. Okay. Uh, as, the, as the product page says, Ultimate members get this template for free. So you can download it as many times as you want to, to always be abreast of the, the recent changes I make to it, which is pretty much on a daily basis now. Okay. Uh, you can also get this downloaded as many times as you want if you are one of my care plan clients. Outside of that, this template is available as a one-off product purchase. Um, just purchase it straight up. And I also include it with any starter site sales. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this and look at where we are in the template. As we see here on the far left, we are still in the My Listing column. We've got a long way to go through this column. As I pointed out throughout the series, if you work through this template, top down, left to right, a majority of the time, uh, nine times out of 10, you're, it's gonna work just perfectly. Uh, depending on your business, your website, some cards might be flip-flopped or not apply at all, no problem, just uh, you know, adjust as you go along. But for the majority of people out there, top down, left to right, will get you a My Listing website built, okay? So where we left off, is uh, the preview cards, other settings. Now I could have dropped this over into the performance column as well, but because this actually has to do with design as well, I just went ahead and we're gonna knock this down uh, right away. Uh, so let's get into our dashboard of our My Listing website and take a look at this thing. So we find these settings under theme tools and then performance. Yeah, I could have included this under the, the performance column, um, looking at the template again, under the performance column, along with preview cards caching. But something important that I want to point out is that caching should be enabled only when you launch, not during your actual build. So that's why I separated these two items. They kind of go hand in hand, but they kind of don't. So uh, that's, I wanted to point out why I separated those two, okay? So what we're doing right now in this uh, section of this video has to do with performance too. So it's not just design. Okay, so once we're there uh, under the preview cards area, we're gonna click on other settings. In this first setting here, background image, gallery picture quality, okay? It defaults to 768 wide by auto tall. So it's gonna adjust the height um, based on the width automatically. Uh, so what I'm going to show you here is that this is this is overkill. This is adding unnecessary uh, overhead to the performance of your website. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you this. So if we look at the front end of our website, uh, let's go to the Explore page. Here we have a listing, and I've I've configured the Explore Explore widget. Um, to the point where there's nothing that's going to impede the size of it, like shrink, shrinking it down wise. So this is, is on, as wide as this preview card is going to get on this particular screen resolution that I'm on. Okay, There's no column to the right to shrink it down. There's no map to shrink it down. This is as big as it's going to get. Okay, So if we inspect this preview card, we see here that it's it's maxing out to five, we'll call it 500 wide by 230 tall, 230 height, okay? Now, that is because of my screen resolution. If I change my screen resolution, let me go ahead and do that. So if I drop my screen resolution, let me blow this up here. So I've maxed out this particular uh, this, you know, video card that I have. I've, I've used the recommended settings, I've blown it up. You can see it, it's, it's quite a high resolution. Let's just say I drop it down to the next one down, just 
just to, to show you how this works. Okay, so once we do that, we see that things are blown up a bit here. And now when we hover over this um, and using our inspect, we see that we, we went down from 501.5 wide by 230. It dropped it all the way down to 373.5 by 230. So let's drop this down again. Let's drop our resolution down to high definition, which is 1920 pixels. Okay, so we see here now, if we look at the same, the same data, it dropped it down further from 373, now we're at 341. But it doesn't really matter because the, the max is what we really wanna pay attention to here. Okay, so I'm gonna put my screen resolution back. Okay, so here we are back. Let's inspect this again. So there again, we see five, we'll call it 500, 500 by 230. It is likely that you will never exceed, let's just call it 600 um, wide. Now, if you have a really crazy resolution monitor, it may get up there. I don't have that at my disposal to test. Maybe some of you out there can let me know, but the chances of this preview card ever getting above 600 pixels is it's slim to none um, so I want you to keep that that number in mind okay so remember 600 wide so if we jump back over to the setting it defaults to 768 wide so if we're saying this max is out on my really high resolution screen at 500 you can see setting this 268 pixels wider is overkill and it's adding to perform performance overhead to your website. So what I recommend doing here, and this is just a super easy win uh, across the board and free for all of you out there that has a my listing website, knock this down to one of the options that does 600 wide. So you, for that, you either get uh, WooCommerce single or, uh, or shop single. So we'll go ahead and set WooCommerce single. So that's gonna give us the 600 wide and then auto height, okay? So that, that's gonna save us that 168 pixels. So we're gonna drop down from 768 to 600. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna duplicate this tab. And so as you can see here, let's go ahead and refresh this. This one is showing uh, the, with the 768 setting that my listing gives you by default. This is the 600. There is no drop off in quality whatsoever. So if I go in here to my listing type, sorry, uh, theme options, single listing, let's just take off So what I've done there is completely remove the opacity from that, okay? So let's go, the opacity is gone, so then you can really see like the quality, right? So let me go back in here. Let me put this back on 768. So this would then be our before, and this would be our 768. So again, 600, 768. There's no drop off, it look, the, the images look identical. Okay, so that's a really, really quick win that you can get and for free to optimize your site. Now, you can imagine if you have hundreds of listings that are loading in here, and then let's say you even have the gallery images, so multiple images per preview card, um, you're gonna save all of that weight, um, knock all of that weight off of your pages where your, these preview cards exist, okay? Um, so that's what I would do there. Is the 600 auto. You don't want to go any lower than that because as I've shown you, you're going to be, you're going to be uh, killing your image quality. So like, for example, if I knock this down to, uh, let's do this 300 by 300. You see it looks blurry. Blurry. So that's what you want to do there. Set this to one of those 600 
um, 600 by auto settings, okay? All right, so while we're in here, the next up is how many gallery slides to load. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna go into my, into my listing type. And I'm gonna set, I'm gonna set it to use the gallery. So single page, sorry, preview card. Sorry, I keep going back here. I forgot at what point I built this site out. I keep wiping it out, but um, let's go ahead and add the, um, the gallery field here, okay? While we're in there, let's set the single, the preview card uh, background to gallery. Okay, and let's update. Now let's edit our listing and let's add a gallery, some gallery images to it. Okay, so looking back at the setting here, how many gallery slides to load? The default is three. So if I have three gallery images, it's, it's gonna display all three of those images on a slider, okay? So I like that default setting. Um, the other option obviously is, you know, set this to zero. This is gonna speed up your page load, okay? Because it, let's say again, if you have those hundreds of listings, instead of pulling in three for each, you're just pulling in the one. The downside of doing this is it's just the one. Um, sorry, my settings didn't save, so let's do one. And refresh. So there we go. So we just have the one image there. So it basically knocks it down to be like a cover image, okay? Um, and then obviously, the higher this number gets, the slower your page is gonna load. Uh, I, I like that. I like the default value that they go with. I think that's a nice and medium, median. I have had client projects where they wanted to display um, like six and sometimes nine to really let let the user of the website get a sense of uh, what the listing is all about before having to click through it. And I've also had the opposite where they want to set the value here to um, to a really low value so it forces people to click into the listing and see what it's all about okay so lots of different approaches you can take there but i wanted to explain what this setting actually does okay let's go back to um let's go back to our template here and the other thing i wanted to point out about this is um yeah you, if you get the template you can read through everything i explain here or pause this uh, recording and read this. But the other piece to this is, okay, great. So you've optimized this for the right size, you know, your, that 768 setting. If you wanna optimize this even further, take the short pixel adaptive image, adaptive images plugin, SPAI. The club has a discount, um, so you can get bonus credits from short pixel, but SPI is the plugin that I recommend. And what that plugin allows you to do is is optimize your images even further. So instead of saying, um, hey, let's display them at 600 by auto and just leaving it, let's go a step further. Let's, let's actually fit the image to match the exact container size that we have here. So what if, for example, uh, you're on a screen resolution that's not really high, it's lower. Um, I don't know what that would be, like maybe a, a, a tablet, like 1024 pixels. What if you could shrink those images down to match those exact container sizes? Imagine the performance improvement that would be across the board. So in, instead of saying, let's load these things at 600 on those lower image, lower resolution devices, let's, let's load those images at the exact size that they need to be. That's the magic of SPAI, uh, short pixel adaptive images, okay? So, I cover that uh, in this task and link to those uh, those discounts. And there's also a guide for it as well. Okay, uh, next up, let's look at data updates. So we're, we're back here in the, that same performance area, but instead of preview cards, we're gonna click on data updates. This is what it's gonna look like by default, out of the box with a, with a clean My Listing install. What you wanna do here is click done. That's gonna open these up. And really simply here, just run these. Run, just make sure that they're all they're ran and they're green, okay? 
That's pretty much it. Now, I have seen in some projects that they revert back. Once they're green, all green, they do revert back to being like not green, so that like they need to be ran. Um, if you want to like not touch this stuff going forward or at all, uh, I recommend the Perf Matters plugin. So uh, let me go ahead and install this. I'm gonna go ahead and install Perf Matters here. All right, so once Perf Matters is installed, you can go up under Tools, Database, and this is gonna give you the same stuff. So what I, I, I have a Perf Matters guide that I linked to for this task, but if, if you just, depending on the hosting you're on, you can, uh, like if you're on Keensta, you don't, you don't enable this tables option because it can do more harm than good because Keensta already optimizes your database tables for you. Uh, that's a whole different topic, but uh, I've, these top ones here are, are always safe to do and then you can put these on a schedule so I usually do a weekly and save changes and then optimize now so on a weekly basis perf matters is going to take care of everything that um, was under that data update section of my listing okay so then you don't have to worry about it it's just going to run it and clean that stuff for you all right let me see if there's anything else I need to mention under this yeah, like I said, I link to um, both Perf Matters guides. Okay, next up, let's look at listing stats. So we'll, for that, we're going. We're still under theme tools, but now we're going to go out of performance and into listing stats. All right, by default, it's going to cache every sixty minutes, you know, up to an hour. So that's probably fine for a lot of my listing websites out there. I would not change this value to anything less than this unless you were receiving requests from your user base, your customers, that they're not seeing the stats um, as fast as they would like to see the stats. Typically, these people are busy running their own business. They're not jumping in and refreshing trying to see their stats on an hourly basis. It's, it's not likely. But if you get five people saying, hey, I'm not seeing X, Y, Z, it may be time to start thinking about adjusting this setting. But even then, I would argue, you know, it's five people compared to maybe you have a thousand customers. It's probably, for me, that's not enough to implement that change. Um, but I do recommend thinking about in, um, increasing this if you're gonna do anything. So make that caching uh, value higher so that it's, it's better performing uh, in the dashboard for them. So. The longer you can keep things cached, uh, the better performing your website is gonna be. So you gotta find that happy balance between extending the cache versus showing people what they wanna see in a timely fashion, okay? Delete stats older than, it's gonna default to 30 days, so you're only ever gonna get a month's view of your data with this setting. So I recommend upping this to 183, which is six months, and then I recommend the corresponding setting to this, uh, which is unchecking 12 months and, and showing them six months. So that's gonna say, hey, let's collect data, uh, up here again, delete stats older than, let's collect data for up to six months, let's show them in the visits chart the last six months. Once that seven month hits, it's gonna delete stats older than six months. So it's always gonna just show you the last six months of data and all of that you know, works out, right? It's, you, there's no point in keeping last 12 months checked if you can't show them six months of data, right? And there's no, no use in showing them any of this stuff other than the last 30 days if all you're collecting, that would make sense, potentially. Not really though. If, if you wanna be able to show them trend analysis, this wouldn't even make sense. So I would show them, again, six months of data, and then six months on the chart, okay? Next up is the stat boxes. Now, there's nothing that your listing owners can do about a majority of these things. Um, refers, there's nothing they can do about it. Platforms, showing them that someone is visiting their listing from a Windows device, a Microsoft Windows device, they can't do anything about that. Only you, the website owner, can do anything about those stats. 
Same with devices, same with browsers, and same with countries. There's nothing your listing owners can do to their listing to make to make it um, take use of these stats. Um, the only th three that I recommend enabling are the views block and the tracks. Uh, the tracks is still valuable to the listing owner because they can see what people are clicking on on their on their listing, what they're interested in, um, and you can prove to your listing owners the value that their listing has. And that's what these three values do: the views and the tracks. Okay. If you if you give if you enable all of these other things, it, it just it's going to present more than they need to see. It's going to cause you know more questions than it gives answers. It's going to fill your database with unnecessary data. It's just not necessary. So again, I recommend only these three toggles here. Okay. Uh, the last thing in this area is the color palette. For that, I, I recommend using your own branding uh, rather than these default purple and blues, unless of course these happen to, to match your branding. But what I sometimes do is, is use this hex color tool. And let's just say hypothetically that my branding is this this blue color right here, whatever this is. Um, I like to just lighten it, click this lighten button, and it's gonna give you the different shades. So here's our default, 1A blah, 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 which is this one, and then here's 10% lighter, and then here's 20%, and then 30. So take this value of your main color, let's, let's pretend like this is your accent color, right? Go in here, drop the darkest one in the far left, drop the darkest one into the fill series, view series, sorry, like so. Go back to hex color codes, and there's other tools that you can use for this. There's a million. This is just one I, I often use. Let's grab the next shade. Let's drop that in here at the left, okay? And just keep working our, our way down here. And then once we get that into color four, I also drop that color four into this one, the unique views. What that does is gives a really nice contrast before this, between this really dark color and the light color. So let's save our changes. And let's go look on the front end to our listing. There we go. So now you can see that nice branding in there. Okay. Lots of ways you can go with this, but that's, that's a, that's, this is a way that at a minimum that I recommend doing so it has your branding in there okay um, I think that's we will let me go back to our card here and see no let's knock out a little bit more because the map services I'm not gonna be able to do a whole lot for you um, in this video but let's go ahead and go there going back to our dashboard let's drop down from drop out of listing stats let's drop into map services I typically go with Mapbox here. It's just easier to set up and the, the free tier is more generous, meaning you're gonna be able to use Mapbox a lot longer than you are Google Maps um, before you incur a charge. Now, if you do start incurring a charge, that means your website is wildly popular and it is a great problem to have. So uh, if you do need to pay, that, that's, that means your website is doing extremely well. Uh, okay. Uh, but I do include a guide here in this task card for map services for setting these up and uh, I'll let that guide walk you through that but it's just as simple as getting your API key plug that in uh, I leave the language field the same and then you got to choose here uh, what items to, re to return for the search result or the the geo location autocomplete can't find my words you want to autocomplete, send back information about countries, regions, postcodes, districts, places, localities, neighborhoods, addresses, points of interest, or landmarks. You just got to decide what you want to do there. And you can choose multiple. It doesn't just have to be one or the other. If you leave it blank, it's going to return for all of them. Uh, and the same thing here. Autocomplete returns results in. And you just choose uh, your locations there, okay? The last item up here is custom map styles. 
you can add a bit of flair to your maps and make them look a certain way. So let me give you an example. Here's the base camp starter site. If we look at the Explorer page, I created a custom map style to match the branding of the site. Uh, let's look at another starter site. And this is a custom map. And let's look at one more. This is the Vow starter site. There we go, all custom maps. So you can decide if you want to use that or not. And the uh, map box does include a uh, pre-styled maps for you to, to use as well if you want. Okay, uh, like I said, there's a guide included in the project template that walks you through setting these up. Okay, I think we're gonna call it quits there because the next one is a is, is a pretty um, is a pretty good sized task. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe so you know when the next video of this series comes out or my next video in general. And hope everybody is well out there. Have a good week. Talk to you later.